Greetings. I'm Jume Casho, a futurist and writer in California. I've been doing foresight work for over 25 years. I've given a lot of thought to the future implications of a variety of topics, from climate to politics to emerging technologies. But at this point, I'm probably best known for creating the BANI framework. I came up with BANI in 2018 as a tool for my own use, but showed it to a larger public in 2020. The immediate response took me by surprise. And I must say, to have an academic symposium on BANI is a real honor. Thank you very much for this and for inviting me to participate. Now, given that the title of this symposium is The Banny World, I'm going to go ahead and assume that most of you are at least familiar with the topic. I'm not going to focus on the meaning of the terms brittle, anxious, nonlinear, and incomprehensible. Instead, I'd like to talk about how Banny gets used and what Banny suggests about how to respond to chaos. But I'll start with why Banny has become so relevant for people around the world. And it most definitely has. Over the past couple of years, I've spoken and written about Benny for audiences around the globe, for government groups, universities, and businesses alike. But beyond that, I've seen hundreds of articles written about Benny by other people in at least a dozen different languages. And over the past couple of years, the vast majority of attention given to Benny has come from the developing world. Now that's not surprising. I initially created Banny as a new way of seeing the combination of global crises in a world where the old VUCA model of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity had become insufficient as a way of understanding disruptions to the global systems. And while all of that's certainly true of the U.S. and other Western countries, it's an overwhelming reality for much of the less wealthy world. For the majority of people on the planet, chaos is a constant. The financial political crisis that has gripped Sri Lanka is just one example. There's also the political situation in Brazil, where the presidential elections may lead to a coup or even a civil war. Or the accelerating impact of climate disaster, from deadly heat to a third of Pakistan, a third of the country, being underwater. And systemic chaos is probably most visible in recent months in the tsunami of consequences of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Banny is a way of talking about these kinds of rapid discontinuity. Changes that aren't just big or complex, but hit with such speed or disproportionate effect that we have a hard time understanding them. Even when we can see the crisis coming, all too often we don't grasp just how big and disruptive that crisis will be. When Dr. Minaj asked me to be a part of this event, he suggested that I take a look at the recent Sri Lanka crisis through the Banny lens. Now, I have to admit, my knowledge of the crisis had been headline level at best. But digging more deeply into Sri Lanka's recent history made it very clear to me that Bani is indeed a useful way of examining the events, and, perhaps more importantly, what might be done to avoid a similar crisis in the future. So, in what ways have we seen Bani? Brittleness appears to be a recurring element of nearly all of the key issues, from debt traps to agricultural policy. Systems that people had relied upon abruptly stopped working, whether for political reasons, changes to the global financial system, or the collapse of critical institutions. Now, I'm going to go a bit out of order here. Nonlinearity is a good lens for seeing how international conditions, such as the Russian invasion of Ukraine, impacted Sri Lanka, as well as how tactical choices from an unsteady Sri Lankan leadership seem to make the political crisis spiral. Complex problems would intersect, with the combined result being far more disruptive than anyone expected. Incomprehensibility blankets everything. Confusion, misinformation, and a glaring lack of transparency further weaken the brittle systems and accelerate nonlinear events. And as a result, anxiety is everywhere. Constant stress and danger, voices calling for revolt, the fear of economic collapse or even starvation. So much of the last couple of years of Sri Lanka's history is filled with relentless anxiety. So what do we do? What does Bani tell us to do? I'm going to disappoint you here. Bani is not a magic wand to reveal solutions. Arguably, most of the kinds of system breaks that Bani encompasses don't actually have solutions, at least not in the conventional sense. We can look for responses and, better yet, adaptations. But there isn't a Bani-approved checklist that can make things better. 
one undeniable truth is that the future keeps coming. How we respond to the crisis of the moment helps to shape how, even whether, we can respond to the next one on the horizon. So let's break down the kinds of responses to Bani that, at least from my perspective, might make Sri Lanka less vulnerable to this kind of chaos in the years to come. And let's go in order this time. Brittle systems need resilience. Resilience is the capacity of a system or institution or person to withstand sudden shocks, to be flexible rather than brittle. System resilience often means having more resources available than might typically be needed as a cushion for the unexpected. That might mean tangible goods, such as storing additional food supplies in case of periods of limited food availability. Or it can mean something less concrete, such as knowledge, like emergency planning or practice at responding to large-scale disaster. Either way, this underscores that a truly resilient system needs to be built up before a crisis hits. To me, this means that one of the critical components of a resilient system is the willingness to engage in foresight work, such as scenario planning. So with many in mind, ask yourselves, how could Sri Lanka prepare for another crisis of this scale? Anxiety-inducing systems need empathy. Empathy in this context means the capacity to recognize and acknowledge the negative human effects of a broken or chaotic system. In its simplest form, it's a willingness to be kind and forgiving to others and to oneself. Many of our communication tools seem designed specifically to increase anxiety, as well as fear, anger, and mistrust. Engagement with a TikTok video or a Facebook post is said to increase when it upsets people, prompting the digital networks to push even more of that kind of material. Empathy from a Benny perspective can come down to seeing the algorithmic manipulation for what it is and being able to appreciate that chaos-driven stress affects all of us. Again, from a Benny perspective, ask yourselves in what way might anger and mistrust block pathways to resolving the crisis. Nonlinear systems need improvisation. By improvisation, I mean the ability to adapt quickly to unexpected changes and developments. Improvisation requires that people not be restricted to just a predetermined set of choices. It may well be true that, under normal conditions, those predetermined choices are the best. What we need to see is that when conditions are no longer normal, continuing to do what you've been doing, or worse, being forced to continue it, can lead to negative, even disastrous outcomes. So ask... Where are people and institutions in Sri Lanka still following old scripts and behavioral rules that are no longer relevant to a chaotic environment? Finally, incomprehensible systems need intuition. Intuition is the willingness to listen to our brain's ability to recognize when something doesn't feel right, even when all of the surface indications are okay. In the U.S., we sometimes refer to this as a gut feeling, and I suspect that there are terms for this all over the world. Our brains are remarkable machines of pattern recognition. Our subconscious minds can reach conclusions based on piecing together evidence that's there that we don't consciously notice. So ask, over the past few years, what signs of an imminent crisis were missed because they weren't obvious or didn't make immediate sense? More importantly, what are you missing now? Intuition matters more than you might think. A week or so ago, we passed the 39th anniversary of arguably the most important example of intuition in modern human history. In late September 1983, a Soviet air defense officer named Stanislav Petrov received an alert from early warning systems showing the launch of five U.S. nuclear missiles. If he'd followed protocol, Petrov should have sent a message up the chain of command, one that would have very likely resulted in the automatic launch of Soviet missiles, which in turn would have led to the U.S. launching its own missiles, and ultimately the deaths of nearly everyone on Earth. But even though relations between Washington and Moscow were at their, at their lowest point in decades, the situation simply didn't feel right to Petrov. He decided not to forward the alert which ultimately turned out to be a system error. For his good sense and judgment, Petrov was demoted, reprimanded, and encouraged to take an early retirement. He died a few years ago, living on a pension in a small town in Russia. But that's not the lesson we take from this story. 
the lesson here is that, especially in a BAMI world, intuition matters. And only human brains can do it. It's the product of millions of years of biological evolution. In fact, all of the many responses I just talked about, intuition and empathy, improvisation and resilience, are very hard to measure, impossible, at least for now, to turn into algorithms, and very human. They're the ways that human beings have long adapted to periods of chaos, and our current period of chaos is by no means over. I created Benny in 2018 as a way of getting a grip on the increasing levels of chaos I could see all over the world. Little did I know that what I considered chaotic at the time would pale in comparison to what was to come. 2018 was before COVID, before the invasion of Ukraine, before the spread of deepfake AI, before the attempted insurrection in the United States, before record-breaking global heat, global heat waves and storms and wildfires. Makes me wonder. What might the next four years have in store? Thank you.